First of all, I want to express my sincere appreciation to Dr. Washington and those who are working with him in this Minister's Institute conference for inviting me to come and to have a few words here during the uh, worship service of the Lord. We realize that this is the first day of the conference as such, but this is also the first day of the week. And we give honor, honor and glory to God. I just got here. My wife and I have been lost ever since we've been here trying to find different places. But the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right. <laughs> I remember getting lost in Houston, my own home, when I went back to visit. And I stopped in at a place and asked the uh, proprietor uh, how to get to a certain place, and that is get back to the Lovefield Airport. Uh, uh, rather the Hobby Airport uh, hotel where I was staying. And he came out, he said, where are you parked? I showed him where I was parked. He said, I go back to the light, turn right, and go straight. I said, all right, I'll follow those directions. And I, I followed those directions and I ended, back, ended up back at my, my hotel. But I told the man in talking with him, I said, I, I thought I was on, on the right road. He said, you are on the right road. You're just going the wrong way. <laughs> and we have some people like that in religion. They're on the right road. That is, they're trying to get back to God. That's the right road, trying, trying to get to God. But they're going the wrong way. Today, I want to call your attention to Hebrews chapter 12, a very familiar passage, uh, verse tw uh, 22. I shall begin reading with verse 22. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkling, a sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. I want to talk to you today in starting uh, the uh, workshop or the uh, I want to call it uh, just the church, a foretaste of heaven. The church, a foretaste of heaven. The text is found, uh, or rather the context is dealing with the journey of the Israelites uh, from Sinai. Uh, on into the New Testament age when the Mosaic dispensation ceased and on the first Pentecost after the resurrection of Christ we have uh, the second dispensation and before the Mosaic dispensation as most of you know already we had the patriarchal dispensation from Adam to Moses and then the Mosaic dispensation, which had to do with Sinai, the law being given to Moses on Sinai. And then, of course, we come at the end of the 
giving of the law, or rather the end of the d duration of the law uh, of Moses. We have Jesus who died on the cross and a new dispensation began. So the Hebrews writer here is writing to people who are familiar with these dispensations and he reminded them of how they had uh, feared and quaked at Sinai when the law was being given. And then he comes to our text which said, but you have come. Uh, not to Mount Sinai, you, you've left Mount Sinai. You have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. And he went on to identify what we as Christians have come to. He says, to the church of the firstborn. In the original, it's the church of the firstborn ones. In other words, Christians are the firstborn. We are the firstborn of God. And that's why he said, whose names are written in heaven. So we know that he's talking about a plurality of names when he says firstborn. Sometimes uh, we, have, we are prone to, to tie that strictly to Jesus, the one person. And some churches, denominational churches, name themselves the church of the firstborn. But this passage is speaking of the church of the firstborn ones. In other words, uh, we are the church of Christ. And our names, as we are members of the church, our names have been written in heaven. And then the writer says that you have come to God, the judge of all men, and to the spirits of righteous men made perfect. You can be a good man, but you can't be a perfect man in the sight of God until your, your sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus. And here it is that he says, not only have you come to this place where God gives man a makeover, but you have come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. And you have come to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Thus, we see in this passage that the writer is giving us really a foretaste of heaven. We are trying to make it to the city of God. And uh, the church is the means by which we travel. Uh, there is only one means of travel. And that is the captain will have to pick you up. You can't travel the airlines. You can't travel the trains. You can't even drive your cars. But we have come. We have come to the church of the firstborn ones. We have come to Jesus, the mediator of this new covenant. And we have come to something that's better than Abel. And Abel, of course, you know, was killed by his brother. And I asked my students this sometime. I used to ask them when I was teaching. I said, how long did Cain hate his brother? And they wouldn't know. And I would say, as long as he was Abel. <laughs> so you're familiar with that Abel, and, and you're familiar with Cain. But the point here is uh, God has given us a foretaste. You see, the church is in the manifold wisdom of God. The church was planned by God. We have some brethren today who are saying God doesn't have a plan. God does have a plan. 
And you ought to be thanking God every day for his plan. If you are not in it, it just means that he hadn't planned for you to be in it. Because God knows the end from the beginning. And we're going to give you the opportunity before sitting down here today uh, to know how you can be in God's plan of salvation. Now, I'm one of these reading preachers, and I want someone to get for me Ephesians chapter 3. In verses 10 and 11. And uh, we look at uh, Isaiah 46, 8 through 11 to show you that God has done some planning. Let's look at Isaiah first. Isaiah 46, verse 8. If you have it, say amen. If you don't, say I make a confession. Remember this. <laughs> Isaiah. 46 verse 8 Remember this Remember this And show yourselves men And show yourselves men Bring it again to my mind Bring it again to my mind O oh, ye transgressors O oh, you transgressors Remember the former things of old Remember the former things of old For I am God I am God And there is none else And what? And there is none else There is none other Read I am God. I am God. And there is none like me. And there is none like me. Read. Declare the end from the beginning. Because the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. All right, from ancient time until things that are not yet done. Saying my counsel shall stand. Saying my countenance shall stand And I will do all my pleasure I will do all my pleasure Calling a revenous bird from the That's all right, east. that's enough The point is God said be from before time Yes sir Even until after time You see God is not bound by AM and PM yeah. And he's not bound His book doesn't change like the calendars of the year all of us have recently put up the 212 calendars, but you, you don't have to do that with the book of God. Because God knows the end from the beginning and he has a book. And the Bible says the word of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. It's perfect and anything that's perfect, don't tamper with it. And it is God who has told us about the church and even before we came along God gave a foretaste a foretaste of his church and uh, you remember God had a secret uh, in, in the Bible the Bible uh, lets us know that, that God called uh, his church at one time a mystery it was in the mind of God from the foundation of the world. And so he says, I am going to give you something. Let's go to uh, Romans, Romans uh, 16, 25, and we'll see that it was a secret. The Bible says what? Now to him, now that, is to him power, that is what? Of power, of power to establish you to establish you according to my gospel according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus and the Christ, preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation according to the revelation of the mystery of the mystery which was kept secret which was kept secret since the world began you know, some people some some people who have, if some of the people living today had been living uh, at that time they would have died because they didn't know the secret. Uh, because people, some people want to know all of it. Well, God said, I will give it all to you, but I'll give it to you when I'm ready to give it to you. He said, according to the what? To the revelation, the revelation of, the mystery, of the secret. Which was kept secret. Which was kept secret. Since the world began. Since the world began. But now. But now. It, it is made manifest. manifest. And by, by the, the scriptures, scriptures of the prophets according, according to, to the, the commandments of the everlasting of the God, God made known, known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Oh, the obedience of faith. He said, I kept it a secret as long as I wanted to. Yes, sir. And then I opened it up 
and I put it in the scripture. And in the scripture, it tells you all about where you are at any time. Any time, it will tell you about where you are. I asked a man uh, over there by the hotel, I, uh, my wife and I were in the car, and my wife didn't want uh, my to call, me to call her name because she said I was the one that got us lost. <laughs> but I asked a man, he said he had a, uh, what is it, GPS, uh, uh, and said, uh, uh, I think you go this way or that way and so on. Well, uh, God uh, gives us a GPS. He gives us the word of God. Now, you can go against what you read, but you can rest assured you will never have your name written on the books of heaven. So we have, as children of God, we have the secret that's been unfolded. Yeah. It was in the mind of God from the foundation of the world. Yeah. In Romans 16, 25, now unto him who is able to do what? Ro Romans 16, 25, now unto him. That is, that is of power to establish That is you. of power to do what? Establish you to establish you according to my gospel according to my gospel whatever it is it has to be according to the gospel that Paul preached yes sir now we have a lot of preachers coming on the scene today some even in the church but most of them in denominational churches who want to give a new message yeah but even 2,000 years ago Peter said if any man speak let him speak as the oracles of God. So now unto him uh, is a power. Read. According to the revelation of the According mystery. According to the revelation of the mystery. Which was kept secret. Which was kept secret since, since the, the world, world began, began. But now. Is made manifest. It's made manifest. And by the scriptures. Scriptures. You and have the prophet. to come to the scripture. That's why the Bible says the things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. We through patience and comfort of what? Of the, the scripture of the prophets might have hope. Yeah. So all I want to let you know now is that God in the Bible gives us a foretaste. Well, let's deal with one of the words. You got for and taste. Taste. Taste means to experience something. You ever been at uh, one of the dinners we have on the ground, as we say, and some sister will tell you, go over there and taste my cake. Yeah, yeah I've tasted a lot of cakes. <laughs> but I didn't like some of those tastes. But taste me, you have an experience. You're given just a little piece to determine how the rest of it is. So here we are given a glimpse of heaven and uh, when we get a glimpse of heaven it reminds me of something I want to read to you because I love as most people know I love the Bible but I like poetry and I like humor but in this poetry I want to read something that I want you to remember in this lesson, it is the nature, this is by Robert Browning, it is the nature of darkness to obscure, that is to hide. I am a wanderer, I remember well. One journey, how I feared the track was missed. So long I had looked for the city and suddenly, suddenly when the spires opened up, the clouds backed up, he said, you can imagine my transport. Soon, however, the vapors closed again. But here is the key, here are the key words. But I had seen the city. 
And one such glance, just to get a taste of what God is going to give to us who live for him. And once you get that glance, he said, no darkness can obscure, obscure nor shall the present. When I come into the Bible to get a confirmation of looking for a city like Paracelsus, and this man's name was Paracelsus, the character, he said, I saw it when the clouds opened, but the clouds closed. But I had captured that picture in my mind. But I had seen the city. Listen to this. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign land, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for the city which hath foundation, not just in a city with a foundation, but he looked for the city which had foundation, whose builder and maker was God. All of us are looking for that city. We're looking for that city, and God gives us a glance. God gives us a taste. God gives us a for taste before we get to heaven God said I'm going to give you something that will make you want to inherit the place that I'm talking about and many people wonder these days how is it that we who are members of the church uh, uh, can undergo different types of trials and tribulations and they wonder, why would we stay faithful to a God who opens up the ground and swallows up people? To a God who lets little children burn to death? To a God. And people say, you call that a God? Yes, that's the God. God gave life. God can take life. And what we need to understand is that we who are Christians, regardless of what God does, He's right anyway. No man can question him. So it is that when we have problems, we still sing, I really love the Lord. And someone wonders, well, how can you love him when you just heard of that earthquake and that tsunami and all of those people died? Well, we keep on singing. You don't know what he's done for me. He gave me the victory. And so regardless of what he does, I really love the Lord. We sing the song, I still, I still got joy. How do you have joy after all the things you've gone through? Because we have seen the city. We've had a glimpse of the city. And nothing will turn us around. Hypocrites in the church. False teachers in the church. People who mistreat us in the church. Someone says, how can you still be loyal to a God who will let all of those things? I'll say to that person, yes, that, that may be happening. And it has happened. It does happen to me and anybody else. But I have seen the city. I've had a taste, I've had a foretaste of heaven. And thank God we realize that the wisdom of God, the word of God tells us all about the city. Then we keep on singing. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over again. Why? Because he keeps blessing me over 
and over again. Well, how can you do that? Are you crazy? No, I have seen the city. When you see the city, nothing will block that out of your mind. You can get sick. You can be sick unto death. And some people will wonder, well, how can you sing and pray and nothing happens? You don't know what's happening. You don't know what happens, but even if you die, you've already seen the city. God gave you a foretaste of what it's going to be like when you get to the city. And who's the old brother used to sing here in Florida? Uh, looking for that city of crime. And that simply means that all of us are those old brothers now. Uh, we can look beyond the trials and tribulations. You know, the world is filled with trials and tribulations and things that will make you turn around if you haven't come too far. Uh, you come so far sometimes you still can't turn around because God said, I've given you a glimpse of the city. Now, you know, he started back there in the Old Testament by letting us see a man. Get for me. I want you to get for me Romans uh, chapter 7. I want to let you see that he uh, let us see a man back there who foreshadowed Christ. Ah, the Bible says in Romans 7, begin with verse 1. The Bible, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, I said uh, Romans 7, uh, Hebrews 7. Hebrews 7 and verse 1. The Bible is going to let us know something about a man who was seen and nobody really knows about him. But read. For this. For this. Melchizedek. Melchizedek. King of Salem. King of Salem. Priest of the Most High God. Priest of the Most High God. Who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings All and right, blessed read. him. Is this all? He met Abraham, what? Returning from the slaughter of the kings and Re blessed him. Returning from the slaughter of the kings. And what did he do? Blessed him. Blessed him, read. To who also Abraham gave a tenth part to of whom all. also Abraham gave a gift of the altar. Read. First being by interpretation king of the righteousness. All right. And after that also king of Salem. King of Salem. The which man is by king the of name of Melchizedek. Keep reading. Without father. Go on. Without mother. Now notice Melchizedek was without father. He was without mother. Without descent. He was out descent. Having neither beginning of days. He didn't have a beginning. Nor he end of life. He didn't have an end. But made like unto the son of God. Made like. You notice that goes all the way back to Genesis now. Yeah. Made like yeah. unto, unto the, the Son of God. Son of God. Abided a priest continu continually. Wait a minute. He abides a priest how long? Continually. Continually. Now he's giving you a foreshadow yeah. of Christ yeah. in Melchizedek. Yeah. Remember hearing that uh, in, in debate where the Muslims thought they had us saying the man without a mother and without a father, without descent, without ending of days, not without this and with. Well, you have to understand the passage. Now, when you study the passage, you're talking about what he's talking about is that is within the Levitical tribe. All of the priests were to come out of Levi, but the priests of the church the chief priest of the church would not come out of Levi he came out of Judah back in Genesis, Genesis again 49 10 for the scepter shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So Melchizedek is no, is no mystery man to me. You just have to understand that Jesus was being foreshadowed. And his priesthood 
did not have to rest. It did not have to rest upon Levi. Yes, sir. So God chose to bring this man forth later. Uh, that is, the one he had exemplified was Jesus. Yeah. And thus Jesus came. Yeah. And even before Jesus got here, God showed some other visions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Book of Daniel. He said, Behold, I saw in the night vision one like the Son of Man. And they brought him to the Ancient of Days with the clouds of heaven. And there was given unto him dominion and power and a kingdom that all nations should serve him. What are you looking at? You're looking at the prophecy concerning the beginning of the Church of Christ. Now, some people like to criticize the church of Christ. Some of us even in the church. One lady called me one time. I was somewhere in a meeting. She wouldn't give me her name. She said, Brother Evans, I just want you to tell me this. She said, I'm getting ready to leave the church of Christ because I'm, my, the preacher is not feeding me. I say, feeding you? Uh, I said, how long have you been in the church? 30 years. I said, well, uh, you've been in the church 30 years and and you don't know where the food is? Get the food for yourself. Study for yourself. Nobody can nurse a baby forever. Babies need certain things at certain times. So anybody who has that attitude, and just, I, I'm not being fair, it's because you, you evidently don't realize that you're supposed to have, have matured to the point that you can see that you can search the scripture for yourself. I have seen the city. All right. Let's read verses 11 of that same chapter, chapter 7. Uh, read verses 11 through 17. Go down to verse 11. It says what? If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood. Here it is. Here it is right here. The explanation of that passage in case you've been wondering about it. If therefore what? Perfection were perfection by the Levitical priesthood. Were by the Levitical priesthood. For under it the people received the law. Uh -huh. What further need were there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek? Why should there be another priest if all of the priests were to come out of Levi, yeah. then and why would another priest come out of Judah? Because that's the way God wanted it. The Son of God, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall rest upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, yes. the Prince of Peace. Yes, That's why we had to have another priest. But he didn't come from Levi. Thank God. He came from Judah and God said that he was going to come out of Judah to tell us all about where he's going to take us. Because he told his disciples when he was on the earth, he says, now, I'm going away. But I'm not leaving you here uh, alone because I'm going to prepare a place that where I am, you may come also. Don't somebody ask him, now, Lord, we don't know where you're going. Now, how do you ex uh, expect us to know the way? Jesus said, I am the way. You're talking to the way. I am the way. And not only am I the way, I am the truth. It's going to take truth to get you there. I am the life. Jesus Christ said, get ready. You're going up. You're going up. And that's why Paul later said, now we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building of God. A house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Well, why are you saying that, Paul? Because God had given him 
a foretaste of heaven. And so he said, we know we have a better place. Better than that of Abel. We, we know that we have a better place. And then old John in the last book of the Bible. And you can come all the way through the 66 books of the Bible and you will find something directly or indirectly connected to the coming of Jesus, to the work of Christ. And when you get on over into the Revelation, book of Revelation, John said, I, John, saw the New Jerusalem. I saw dressed, adorned as a bride. Beautiful bride. Somebody asked me not too long ago to preach on the church, the beautiful bride of Christ. I talked on it, but I also had to add some things because I had to let them know that all brides are not beautiful. Now you 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 act like they are. Oh, you look so good. Oh, I like that dress, and you say all oh, that, but you really you really don't mean that she's. So beautiful. And she's just grinning and, and knowing herself that she didn't hear that very much. I had an old friend, uh, Sister Bessie Fleming in Atlanta when she was living. She knew I liked humor. So she said, Brother Evans, I'm going to tell you something that we used to say when, when we were girls in school. I said, what did, you, what did you say, Sister Fleming? She said, we would say beauty is just skin deep. But ugly is to the bone. <laughs> Beauty will fade with age, but ugly will hold its own. <laughs> now don't start looking around at people. <laughs> Just keep looking straight ahead. Yeah. But the church is the beautiful bride of Christ because she has been washed in the blood of the Lamb. So we can go on with our songs. I keep telling you how much I love it. And then, you know what we sing now? Uh, Billy, I, I suppose you remember too. Sometimes we were afraid to talk about angels in the church. The angels, and angels are in the church. And uh, we, we have grown, uh, we have grown to the point to see that as in the book of Hebrews that they are ministering spirits. So it's nothing wrong with singing all night. Oh, Brother William, you can get with it, can't you? All day. The angels keep watching over me. That's not an unscriptural song. That is a scriptural song. God uses his angels as ministering servants. And he, when we see all of this, and even Stephen, when he was being a stone, uh, God let him just see it literally, to open up just a little, just a little, and he, and he knew to whom he was talking, Lord Jesus. He knew that Jesus Christ was there. God is there. The angels are there. The Holy Spirit is there. So whenever you become depressed and people tell you that your, your, your work in the church of Christ is all in vain you tell them I'm holding on because I have seen the city I've seen the city and the city is where I'm trying to go and we who are children of God need to rest assured that God has prepared it for us and it's going to be for those who have prepared to live there. So we're asking you today in this lesson, are you in the church? The church, which is a foretaste of heaven. Now someone say, well, everybody in the church is not right. So how can you say that's a foretaste of heaven? The point is the Lord knows who those devils are in the church. He already knows who they are and they'll be taken out. They will not go on to the heavenly city. I'm talking about that those of us by faith who have seen the city recognize that if we're even sitting right next to a devil or somebody who pays no attention to the preaching of the gospel, we still hold on 
Because we have seen the city. They haven't seen the city. They haven't had a taste of the city. But we have seen the city. And I don't want to leave the impression that you, that I, I am saying that everybody is right in the church. Everybody in the church is not right. You, 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 and uh, many times we uh, uh, get down to, to funerals, funerals of people not faithful. We know they weren't faithful. And, and, and we'll still, some preachers will still try to preach a lesson and put them on into heaven. That, that, that won't get them there. That won't get them there at all. And uh, sometimes when I go out to a cemetery and I see all of these epitaphs that say, uh, at rest, at peace, uh, I, I, I look at that, I said, now that may not mean that that man or woman in that grave is the only one at peace because he or she is in that grave but a, a, a congregation may be at peace a widow may be at peace a whole lot of people bring peace to the church when they move on so the church is not perfect we can say the beauty of the church, but God's blood continues, continues to cleanse us if we walk in the light. As he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses. Present, active, indicative. It continues to cleanse us as long as we walk in the light. God said, I'm just giving you a taste of what you can have. And sometimes he'll give you a, 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 a taste of the other place downstairs where the devil rules. He'll give you a little taste to make, you sure, make sure you don't want to go there for you to make sure that you don't want to go there and I thank God for this beautiful taste that he has given to us and as a result we are his people we are headed for a place that God started or actually he had it in his mind before creation and then he in everything he did from Genesis to Revelation he was emphasizing the coming of Christ and then when Christ came into the world there were men who called themselves wise men looking for that Jesus they found him and when they found him and let me tell you how they found him they, they followed the star and uh, I asked sometime are we satisfied with, with the light that God has given us to lead us to Jesus. God gave the light. They followed the star. And when they followed the star. And it stood over the place where he was. They knew there. That he was in there. This was the son of God. In the form of a baby. Coming in the world. Putting on human flesh. And you know one thing. When they went in there. They worshipped. But they didn't worship Mary. They did not say hail Mary full of grace. Mother of God and all of that foolishness because Mary is not the mother of God. They worship Jesus and they gave unto him the very best that they had because they knew that he was somebody. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But the point is they wanted people to understand that this was no ordinary baby. This baby was the child of God. One of the Muslims I was debating one time said uh, Jesus Christ could not be the son of God uh, 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 because God uh, doesn't even have a wife. I said, well, Adam and Eve. He had Adam and Eve and they didn't have a mama or a daddy. <laughs> he didn't have to have a wife. God is God. All God needs to do is say. And the earth was formed. Void book says God spoke let there be light and there was light that's the kind of God we serve 
And that is the God who has prepared a place for us in heaven. Now, are you striving to get to that city of God? Well, the church, if you notice here, you've come to the New Jerusalem, the city. The church is the beginning. You, you, this is the holding place. And from here, you have to go through death in most cases. And then God says, if you lived right and walked right and if you died right, you'll get up right. And you will walk with God and God will walk with you because you will be a part of the firstborn. You know we're the firstborn? We are somebody in the church of Christ. We're the firstborn. The, fir the church of the firstborn ones. I preach a sermon sometime entitled Priority Access. And I'm closing but I'll give this illustration. When they give me my ticket, it has written, I mean the boarding pass, they have, it has written on it, priority access. Uh, that means something. That means something. Priority access. We're, we're, we're the first fruit of God's creatures. And uh, to have that uh, Status with American Airlines. I've traveled over a million miles, uh, over two million miles, really, with American Airlines. So I have gold, advantage gold for life. And even I can take people with me. And uh, I have to just show them that I have my, man asked me yesterday, you have your priority card? I said, yes, I, I have my priority card. Well, then that meant my wife uh, could go with me. Ah, uh, on, on the bags, yeah, here we go, advantage, priority card. Yeah. Do you have one? <laughs> I'm not talking about this kind, really. <laughs> I'm talking about, I went to, into the J Dallas um, uh, airport one day, and some of them were taking a lunch break, and they went in the back, so nobody was on the desk. I just stood there, and after a while, See anybody here? That brother came out. A man came out. And he's licking his fingers. Now you know he was a brother. <laughs> yeah, man, where you going? Where you going? I told him where I was going and so on. All right. I said uh, he he hit the, the computer, got the license to hit the computer, and it came up. Priority access. He got so humble. He said, "Oh man, you 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 advantage gold." I said, "That's right for life." For life, if I don't ever ride American Airlines again, I still am advantage, advantage goal for life. Yes. And that's what God wants us to have, priority. Yes, sir. If you don't have priority access, you don't have access to the Holy Spirit, people who are not Christians. You don't have access to the Lord's Supper. You don't have access to the spiritual blessings that God has showered down upon us. Better, you better get your ticket. Priority access. And they can treat me so nice. They say when they have the first class, they have a few seats up there. Uh, Mr. Evans, you want to come on up first class? See, I don't buy first class tickets. Uh, it's not a sin. <laughs> I just don't buy first class tickets. I don't buy first class tickets because I'm a Church of Christ preacher. The brother said, the brothers told the Lord, you keep him humble and we'll keep him cool. But I get upgraded. I can, I had, uh, I had Shelton, I don't know if he's in here with me, Shelton Gills with me one time, just going to an educational meeting. I said, come stand right here, Shelton. He stood right there. I gave him, I gave him the same courtesy that they gave me. We upgraded and you get food, you know, in first class. <laughs> if you're not in first class, you get, what would be your drink? <laughs> what would be your drink? 
and you, you have to say orange juice or Dr. Pepper. Now, now there are some other drinks you can buy. Have any of you ever bought them? No, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Never bought them? Never. How do you know what I'm talking about? I may be talking about root beer. <laughs> but when you have access, bring it into the spiritual realm. We have access to the Holy Spirit. These people dancing night and day trying to get the Holy Spirit to, the Holy Spirit to fall on them and, and speaking tongues and all of that. They, 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 they are really... Uh, I think discouraged because they don't they don't do anything but have an emotion and they call that Holy Spirit. Well anybody can be emotional, it's still not the Holy Spirit. These young people who go to the rock concerts or whatever kind of concerts they have that have nothing to do with spirituality, they fall out. Is that Holy Spirit? And there are some other kind of spirits you can have, you know. Bible, the Bible describes a dumb spirit. One man, and, and what he did, uh, he's a dumb spirit, biting everybody and fighting and kicking. That was a dumb spirit. But when you have a foretaste of heaven, you have priority access. And because of that, we tell people, you don't know what he's done for me. That's why Christianity is an individual thing. Paul said, I'm crucified. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the li life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. It's an individual thing. You remember the letters to the seven churches of Asia Minor? Yeah. God commended them and then he would point out the faults that they had yeah. and then he individualized it at the end of each one. Yeah. But to him yeah. that overcome. Yeah. He didn't say to them, but to him that overcome. That's an individual thing. You have to overcome for yourself. Told the church the other night, I said, we're not going up to the judgment as congregations. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, here comes the uh, South Rock Church of Christ, or here comes that church. Here. No, 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 I don't want my salvation dependent upon how other people live in the West End Church of Christ. <laughs> so everybody needs to embrace Christ for himself or herself. Be a member of the blood-bought institution of Jesus and what you need to do as a, in a prerequisite way is to have faith in Jesus. Repent of your sins, confess Christ, and be baptized in water for the remission of sins. And God's Son has shed his blood that the blood will atone for your sins. Yes, sir. I'm saying this because... There may be somebody here who wants that priority access and who has not seen the city. You need to see the city, but you have to see it through what's written. Through what's written. And one day we'll see it in all of its glory. But we'll have to be in our glory. And God is the only one who gives us that glory. Still faith, repentance, confession. Baptism. When I started, I said God had a plan. God still has a plan. And I still call that the plan of salvation. Now, anybody wants to argue that, we'll have a lot of time to argue here. Won't we? <laughs> we still have a plan of salvation. God had a plan mapped out for this whole day. Before we were thought of, and all of a sudden, some member of the so-called intelligentsia said there is no such thing as a plan. And, some, and some, some men, even some young men and some older men in the church of Christ brag about the fact, oh, I don't preach that anymore. I don't, that's the first principles. Well, I tell you one thing, if you don't preach the first principles, you're not going to grow a congregation. 
I want to be deep. I get deep, deep. That Bible is deep enough. Just like Mayor Chesedick, I've run into a number of preachers who do not even know what that means. How can he exist? Didn't have a mother or father. Didn't have a beginning or an end. How can he exist? Well, you got some deeper things than that in there. God wants you to come today. He wants to save you today. This church wants to see you saved and we'll rejoice with the people who come to Jesus. Will you come today? Will you give him your life? This is the time while together we stand. Yield not to temptation. Oh, a yield in the same. Each victory will have you. And so to win. Come on to Jesus. And for the old one. God. A passion subdue and you just live heaven to my Jesus and he will carry you through. Oh, why don't you ask the Savior to help you come to Jesus and keep you and his will to aid you and he will carry you through a shine a evil companion a mad language this day God name holy and rare take it in vain come to Jesus a heart fit and true and you Come today, come today, come today. And who the life to the same Just ask him. Just ask him. give you come strengthen. And Jesus. He's willing. He's willing. You, and you, you will carry, and who oh, oh, why don't you ask the Savior to, to help? Come on to Jesus. He'll give you comfort, comfort strength, and, and a key. And, and I know that He is able to To, to him, him that, that overcome me, he gave it the crown. Come on to Jesus. Oh, faith we shall conquer, and though often cast down, he who uh, who is our Savior? Our strength be renewed, and you just live forever to, to my Jesus, and He will. And oh. To oh, ask the Savior to him. 
Yes, the Savior is God. Strengthen and heal. Keep you. And I know that he He's waiting. He's waiting. Is willing to aid you and he. I had no hope. I don't you ask I asked him. I asked him to help. Oh, you give me, you come. Comfort. Strength and peace. And I know that he is willing to wait. You and he will. Carry you through. I heard a song the other night, late the other night. The title was, I don't have to understand. I just need to hold his hand. And there are those of you in here now who may be hearing a gospel sermon for the first time. And we don't expect you to understand everything we have been in the church, for miss, most of us older preachers have been in for over 50 years. And we still don't understand everything. So when you think like that, I don't understand. You don't have to understand. You just need to hold his hand. And if you hold his hand, the message will get through by experience. We're going to sing another verse for you. If you've been in that shape that you just didn't know if you should come, you need to come and talk with the brethren of this congregation and they'll help you to understand. Set up Bible classes or do whatever they need to do to help you. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't want to close until, until we sing another song. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking. knocking at your door. Oh, sinner. Oh, sinner. Why don't, Why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking. Somebody's knocking at your door. Come on, come on to Jesus. Come you on to know Jesus. that somebody is knocking at your door. Well, somebody is knocking at your door. And oh, oh sinner, oh, oh sinner, why, why don't you answer? Why don't you answer? Somebody is knocking at your door. One more verse, just one more verse. Come on, come on, come on, Jesus. Somebody is knocking. knocking at your door. Come on, come on, it's Jesus. Not like Jesus. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. In that church door. If any man will hear my voice, and open oh, I'll turn the wide on. Wide on. Is there one more? Is there one more? It is not in that church door. Can you hear him somebody that can at your door? Can you hear him somebody that can at your door? Oh, 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 Sinner, why don't, why don't you come on, somebody, but he's knocking at your door.